So what are sociological theories? What they are are these propositions that help us explain the social world. And from understanding these, we can make predictions about future events, or try to make predictions about future events. And groups of theories are also known as paradigms, but also you can use other terms like sociological approaches, schools of thought, or sociological perspectives. All of these words are a little bit interchangeable. Sociology developed as a discipline basically in response to what was happening in society caused by the Industrial Revolution of the 18th and 19th centuries. Hundreds of thousands of people moved from the farms into the cities to work in factories. All of social life was in upheaval and various theories tried to explain what was going on. Emil Durkheim lived in the late 1800s and he's called the father of sociology. He's associated with the functionalist paradigm that we'll be talking about and this is where he believes that all social structures serve a function and that social structures actually maintain order and stability in society. He also talks about the collective conscience, which is the totality of beliefs and sentiments common to average citizens of the same society. Collective conscience is almost like culture, and we all end up subscribing to that. The collective conscience goes on after people die and can pass from generation to generation. So people enter society, and they are shaped by society, and when they leave, society goes on. He also talks about solidarity that people have a connectedness to a group. And the tighter the group, the more solidarity exists, the more common bonds, and the more cohesion. And when people don't have this, when people are disconnected from a group, or there is a loose group structure, people can suffer from anomie, which is a sense of normlessness. We'll talk a little bit more about each of these ideas in the following slides to make this clear. Next we have Karl Marx who was writing in the late 1800s as well. He's associated with conflict theory and although most people associate Karl Marx with communism and that's a failed economic system as we all know, what's more important for sociologists is his social theory. And what he does is look at conflict that's caused by inequality. So if we're talking about different groups that have access to privilege and wealth and those that don't, that inequality is going to cause conflict. For Marx, there were two major groups of people that were in conflict, and those were the proletariat and the bourgeoisie. The proletariat are the workers, and the bourgeoisie were the capitalists who owned the factories. And so he saw capitalism as a system that creates inequality. Because remember, he's looking at when people are moving from the countryside to work in factories and the conditions at the time were appalling. There were no labor laws. There was no recourse if your hand got chopped off or if you lost a leg. So workers were exploited. And for Marx, they suffered from false consciousness. For him, this meant that they didn't question their conditions. They just took their oppression. In 1848, he wrote the Communist Manifesto, and this is where he famously said, workers of the world unite. He wanted unions to put pressure on factory owners so that the workers were no longer exploited. What he ultimately thought was going to happen was where all the workers would get together and overthrow the bad bosses take over the factories and then collectively work together and share and share alike. And in this scenario, this communist utopia, there would be no more private property because everyone would share in the means of production. Everyone would be owners. Of course, this communist utopia never has occurred. What ends up happening when, when countries go communist is they end up being controlled by the state. So Marx's ideal of the fair society where everybody owns an equal share and participates equally has never existed in the world. Next we have Max Weber. He was writing in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And similar to the other social theorists, Weber was interested in how society was becoming more industrialized. He's different from Marx and Durkheim because he started focusing on how our society was becoming more and more rationalized through bureaucracies. 
So if you think of Marx, you think of factories. If you think of Max Weber, think of offices and how we have bureaucracy. And he talks about how bureaucracies are so impersonal. Because of that, people are depersonalized because they work in bureaucracies and interact with bureaucracies and they become faceless. He believed that contemporary life was filled with a disenchantment and that bureaucracies and this rationalization process ended up dehumanizing people. So he was very pessimistic about modern society. 